Production and distribution of City Club forums on IdeaStream are made possible by the generous support of PNC and the Raskin Family Fund, with additional funding from Robert Conrad, Cleveland State University, the Chautauqua Institution, the Cleveland Clinic, and the United Black Fund of Greater Cleveland Incorporated. Good afternoon and welcome to the City Club of Cleveland. I'm Joe DiRocco, Northeast Ohio Regional President for Fifth Third Bank and a proud City Club member. I'm honored to introduce today's speaker, the co-owner of the Cleveland Browns and the Columbus Crew, Dee Haslam. <laughs> Dee Haslam and her husband Jimmy are rising leaders in the professional sports serving as co-owners of popular NFL and MLS franchises. Ms. Haslam is one of eight women with primary ownership of an NFL team and is the first woman to be on the Major League Soccer Board of Governors. A University of Tennessee graduate, Ms. Haslam began her career in, television, in the television business working for her father, Ross Bagwell. In 1999, she and her partner, Rob Lundgren, took over Bagwell Entertainment and renamed it River Media. A successful company whose productions include the well-known Trading Spaces and Whale Wars, among others. Today, she is actively involved in both franchises and their respective philanthropic and community efforts. Her work helped earn the Browns ownership the Tank Younger Award from the Fritz Pollard Alliance for having built one of the most diverse front offices in all of sports. Ms. Hassam has also received recognition with the YWCA Tribute to Women's Community Service Award, a Junior Achievement Business Award, University of Tennessee Distinguished Alumni Award, and many more. She is passionately involved in initiatives around education, especially advocating for school choice in fighting chronic absenteeism. Today, we will hear insights from her journey in the world of business and professional sports. Ms. Haslam will be in a conversation with City Club CEO, Dan Molthrop. Mr. Molthrop was appointed CEO of the City Club in 2013 after many years as a member, volunteer, and a frequent moderator. A Cleveland transplant, he is also an award-winning journalist, a former high school teacher, and a graduate of UC Berkeley's Graduate School of Journalism. Esteemed guests, members, and friends of the City Club of Cleveland, please join me in welcoming them to the stage, Ms. D. Haslam and Mr. Dan Mofro. Hey there, Dee. Hi. Welcome to the City Club. Thank, Thank you. you so much for joining us. It's an honor. Thank um, you for having me. We're delighted to have you. Um, can we just pause for a moment and recognize what a fun game that was to watch last night? <laughs> Thank you. Um, it, I mean, it's only preseason, um, but, but it was fun to watch and fun to see some really young players shine last night. That was really exciting, especially the pun at the end. 86-yard uh, return. return. It, it was really amazing. So we, that was, that's a fun story. That, that felt like a really important moment in the game, um, maybe even more important than Baker's two-minute drill at the beginning. Um, <laughs> but the... But in, in all seriousness, I mean, Damian Sheehy Giuseppe, he seems to represent something. He does. I mean, if you know the story, um, Damian... I don't know that everybody does, so... Well, he's a young man that um, played some junior college football, <laughs> but um, had dreams to play in the NFL, and he, uh, has, he spent his last time to go to Miami because he heard a Brown scout, was one of our personnel guys who was going to be there. Um, and so he showed up, talked his way in somehow to practice, and he made, he, he got an invitation to come to Cleveland, and, and has, 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 he's part of the 90-man roster right now, which is like unbelievable, but then last night, uh, he's the hardest working guy, I think, in the, in, in the house. He really does. He works tremendously hard. He has nothing, he's put his whole life on the line 
for this. And so that story of dreams, I think, it resonates well with Cleveland and resonates so well with our team. And that what we were so proud of is how that team rushed the field. Yeah. So excited for him. Uh, that that shows us that we're really one or really a team. So I'm just glad you didn't get injured at the bottom of the pile. Last, I know, I worried about that too. <laughs> um, but that was the most important thing we saw is just, you know, we've come together as a team. It's very exciting. Yeah, that feels really different it for, feels this, really good. for this organization. <laughs> I, bet, I bet it does. Really good. Yeah. Um, you know, you and, uh, and, the, and the organization, I think, have been a, on, a, on a journey since you since you and your husband took ownership really yeah <laughs> um but this you know last year felt like a real turning point yes i mean i mean um obviously um it's been a journey for all of cleveland i think mm -hmm. um for a number of years and we have felt that from the moment we um landed here seven years ago almost to the day that a week ago it was seven years um, where we came to Cleveland and realized we knew that Cleveland was an historic team and sports was important to this town, but we had no idea how important it was really to a community until we got involved and realized that it does matter to this community. And um, we've, the suffering's been long and we are so excited that we, um, um, appear to have a team that we can get behind and be excited about. So we're just really excited for our fans, really excited for our, our um, staff and, and people that have worked for years for this team, 20 years, 15 years mm -hmm. at, at this table here, people that have suffered working hard. <laughs> um, we're so grateful for our entire um, organization. Uh, for all the work they put into it too. So for the fans and organization, we couldn't be more delighted. Yeah. Well, I, I think that the um, I we haven't done anything yet. No, as it's the coach would say, say. Yeah. But um, we're very excited. Well, you you have a lot to build on. Um, more to build on this year, it seems. Um, is there another town in the United States where you would have um, sort of a such an ingrained fan base? Like I was just saying, like if you were going to choose to own an NFL team anywhere, this would be the the town with the fan base that would have sort of just the highest expectations and be so ready to be also like sort of ready to be disappointed as well. Do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> now we, I mean, it, it's really interesting. I mean, our family is from Knoxville, Tennessee and the University of Tennessee is everything in that town. And football in Tennessee is everything. It, and people live and die by it and your moods change by it. So um, when we thought we had the opportunity for an NFL team, which is even hard to even imagine, right? That you're thinking about buying an NFL team and you don't realize it till it hits you. But um, one of the places that was circled was we want to be part of a community that really cares about football and we want a historic football team. Mm -hmm. um, that, that's good news and bad news, right? right, right. <laughs> if you had gone, um, yeah, be careful what you wish you, for. Right, if you've gone to the Titans, which doesn't have that um, adamant, um, doesn't have that long-standing history, right. but um, that Cleveland does, it, it, it's very different. Uh, something that Cleveland should be really proud of, actually, that we do have this um, uh, ingrained culture. We talk all the time about how sports is that great unifier. No mm -hmm. matter what background you come from or what you believe, your differences come all together when you're uh, on the, uh, a part of a part of something like that in, in rooting for a team, right? Mm -hmm. Whether it's the Cavs or the Indians or the Browns, right. it's it's a great unifier for this community, and I think that makes it really special. It does, absolutely. Um, being an owner is a different sort of thing. Uh, what did you know? You were minority owners. You, you and Jimmy were minority Which is owners heaven, before. by the way, because yeah. you have no pressure. <laughs> <laughs> um, what did you think it was going to be, and what did it turn out to be? Oh, you have no idea. I mean, look, you, know, you have no idea what it's going to be like or, or even get your head around. Our grand, we watch our grandchildren, and they were little, little babies when we bought the team seven years ago. And they, they're out there like, well, this is no big deal. We're out on the NFL field.